टाइम परमिट आई विल शो नहीं डॉक्टर शिंदे सर यू कैन लाइव इन 5 4 3 2 1 1 गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन वी वेलकम यू ऑल टू ऑर्चो टीवी ऑनलाइन एंड दिस इज द आर ऑफ एक असो and the speaker i hand over to dr ashok kumar sirohi good evening friends <clears throat> today we welcome you in our eighth webinar of the uttranchal orthopedic association and our today's speaker is none other than dr ram prabhu the past ioa president i welcome you sir thank you very much <clears throat> yeah, we with us we have president of maharashtra orthopedic association dr shinde welcome you sir we have dr sanjay shrivastav from lucknow welcome you sir we have our past president of uttranchal orthopedic association dr s k arora welcome you sir our se- dynamic secretary dr punit agrawal <coughs> welcome you Thank and you. dr neeraj jain from jhansi thank you all over all of you for joining us today the topic is versatility of the jess and uh, as uh, dr ram prabhu is known for many workshops uh, all over india and abroad for the jess so he is the right person to be the speaker today dr karne has also joined secretary moa welcome dr karne good evening everybody and thank you very much good evening uh, so i will be giving a short introduction though you doesn't need any introduction but there should be a short introduction of our speaker we welcome dr ram prabhu sir he has done his ms from bombay frcs from uk and fics he has studied from km hospital and gs state medical college bombay passed his ms ortho in 1981 did his spine trauma advanced training in germany and france later did its fellowships in germany france hong kong usa in trauma spine and orthoscopy and joints he has delivered lectures orations and participated in sim- symposia nationally and internationally he has held more than 200 workshops and taught more than 5000 or- ortho surgeons all over the country and abroad his passion is of the organizing the conferences he has been organizing chairman of golden jubilee asia pacific orthopedic association in october 2012 in delhi he has been organizing president of apoa 2050 trauma and infection meeting in mumbai he has been organizing chairman of international rural surgeons conference in 2012 in rajasthan and 2014 in kutch gujarat he has organized 10 national conferences virag hand foot trauma oncology rural surgery and four international conferences he was organizing secretary for golden jubilee iocon 2005 at mumbai he has been past president of bombay orthopedic society twice from 2004 to 2006 he has been past chairman of national trauma committee of ioa past chairman of foreign fellowship committee of ioa past vice president of asia pacific orthopedic association president of ioa in 2017 he has been joint secretary of association of rural surgeons of india trustee of jas co-author of four books reviewer of jbjs he has been head at vn dsi hospital for 30 years now he is hod at wadia hospital and medical director mukand hospital his consultant hiranandani hospital powai past course director of mch past convener of basic surgical skills of frcs edinburgh 
working on deformative correction and development of newer and inexpensive indigenous techniques in orthopedics. His hobbies include mountaineering. He has gone to Himalayas and Alps 30 times. Still, he is planning for his visit to Ladakh in August. He loves travel, music, organizing events and making friends. His wife Meena is a gynecologist and director of Mukanda Hospital. His son Tanay is an orthopedic spine surgeon. The second son Anuj is a banker in USA. Welcome sir. We welcome you. Yeah. So thank you very much Dr. Saroya. Uh, and thank you very much Uttaranchal Orthopedic Association for inviting me for uh, an interactive session on versatility of JS. And I'm glad that we have illustrious company on the panel today, uh, starting from Dr. Ajit Sinde, who is the president of uh, Maharashtra Orthopedic Association, Dr. Karne, who is the secretary, and lots of other senior panelists whom I can see across India. So today we are going to discuss JS, and we are going to actually have interactive sessions discussing some cases in between which the panelists have very graciously got them together. Uh, I know that many of the viewers today are aware of JS. In fact, they have been doing JS for a long time. But at the same time, it is important that they have to be extremely careful, just like any other system, that JS needs to be also judiciously used. The principles of surgery cannot be violated. At the same time, a right kind of implant, right JS equipment also needs to be used. And there is a way to use it. It looks very simple. It looks very innocuous. And it gives excellent results in a very cost-effective manner. But at the same time, we have to be very, very judiciously using this so that we don't land up into problems. And lots of complications that we see uh, that are because they are inadequately used, they are also inadequately kept for some time, and they do not follow the protocols of surgery. And that's the reason why unnecessary, the system can get bad name. So Dr. Sirohi, if you have some questions to ask before I actually share my screen. Sir, I would like to have a short uh, interview of yours so that our audience knows what, for what material you are made up of. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sir, uh, I am very fond of you and uh, we have a long association, yes. but uh, everyone may not be so fortunate. I know. So, so I would like to know something about, uh, you tell our audience something about your schooling and your journey in orthopedics. Oh, okay, okay, okay. See, uh, Dr. Siroa, as he said that we, we, our friendship goes a long way and he has been a wonderful host in lots of Uttarachal Orthopedic Association, the workshop that we conducted, the conference that he held. And I can tell you that he is one of the best organizers that I have seen uh, across India. And uh, I am not differently made. I have 10 fingers, as you can see, just like any other human being. And I'm also made up of the same 206 bones and same kind of muscles. So there is nothing different. But since you asked me about a little bit of journey of orthopedic of mine, uh, I'll just quickly tell you that um, this is just a twist of tale that I have become a doctor and orthopedic surgeon. In fact, um, just to, for those people who do not know, uh, I had a huge family. I was the ninth of nine siblings, four brothers and five sisters, okay? And unfortunately, my father passed away very early when I was just nine years old. Uh, so, and all my brothers and sisters were studying that time. So my two of my brothers sacrificed their education and devoted their time to looking after the family. So we were, we were actually, a higher middle class family and we could afford to have education. My mother, though she was uneducated, was extremely strong pillar for our family. And she literally inspired us, motivated us to study further. 
so all of us excepting my two elder brothers have graduated and post graduated i was in a technical school that is a engineering school and i was destined to become engineer appear for the exam in engineering i got into bombay iit but as i told you there was a twist in the tail and um, somehow i just landed into medical i got into kem that was also one of the best colleges in bombay that time so i had a choice between either going for iit and going further i was pretty good at mathematics in fact uh, in spite of going to medicine also i have won some sudoku competitions in 92 maharashtra state uh, so maths was my really strong point biology was not much because in school we never learned biology but it was just a change of fate that i went to biology and we could appear for iit and get into medicine same time because we used to have that time 11 plus first year science plus inter science and i could get into both uh, so i don't know somehow it was just a fate that i got into medicine having gone into medicine since i was very good at carpentry etc all the engineering stuff orthopedic was a natural choice so uh, during my school and college since I, <clears throat> my whole schooling was done by middle school and higher middle school scholarships and then i got a government merit scholarship my education after fifth standard when my past, father passed away was practically free so i could afford to get into any professional college that time and national merit scholarship really helped me to get through the medical studies uh, which was literally i mean i was spending about 100 rupees per day that was the per year that was the only expenditure in fact i never bought any books because i couldn't afford to buy medical books so i used to read from the uh, library and some of my friends <clears throat> who were very good uh, who could help me lending their books let me tell you that the the i would really praise my teachers and friends for whatever i am today you know right from the school uh, i had wonderful teachers actually held my hand because some kind of sympathy they had or they knew that i could grasp things well the physics chemistry they really taught me well and all these teachers had soft to them they really continued to take treatment from me later on till some of them died at the age of 1995 and i know some of my teachers i have treated them in their terminal illnesses okay my friends have really helped me tremendously i can tell you right from school college medical colleges i am really indebted to all my schools uh, my friends and they were really pillar of strength for me my siblings also helped me and wherever there was a problem whenever there was exam obviously everybody goes through this uh, butterflies in the st stomach but that time also there were people who could console me tell don't worry you have studied well you will pass so my mother and my siblings helped me to do that so orthopedic was once i get it got into medicine orthopedic was a natural choice for me and i really enjoyed doing orthopedics again getting into km hospital orthopedic department was a boon we had phenomenal teachers both teaching us clinical both teaching us orthopedic surgery and later on after i passed almost in 79 80 in uh, during my post graduation i came across professor joshi and i did my first hand surgery course that time in 79 and i was so fascinated by hand surgery fascinated by professor's teaching and i thought that this is the man whom i should get a mentorship from and professor joshi also willingly took that uh, much before his other proteges came uh, i continued to do that then uh, of course jace came little later and then after that for every small things i mean we could consult together have meetings together have workshops together and devise something more keep on innovating etc then travel all across so i had a real fortune that i had traveled with professor joshi in india and abroad in many of the conferences and uh, maybe i don't know whether he called me a blue eyed boy but he really loved me and the the feelings were reciprocal so this is how i got interested in jace and i got interested in very
cost effective indigenous implants and that's the reason why i am not so much do i use ao synthesis etc i have done my fellowship in ao i have done uh, my training in germany but still then i feel that in tropical part or indian subcontinent our poor patients deserve cost effective treatment and we can't really give them this expensive things of course they have got their own merits there are advantages to all this using synthesis and imported implants but at the same time if you if the patient can't afford we can't really give them this things you know because the cost of our surgery cost of everything comes almost to the cost of the implants and that is really prohibitive and at the same time if you go i am i'm also working with the rural surgeons association for last 25 years and i i went to the interiors some of the places in northeast region or even in south where there is no electricity there is no water and we still have to carry out the surgeries and that really gave us an idea that we this kind of jays will help tremendously these people to tide over the problem because this patient sometimes have to travel 100 150 km just to get a primary doctor you know live alone a surgeon so that is the kind of situation and you, all of you know that 200000 villages are there which are very very difficult uh, uh, to approach from many civilized tier 2 and tier 3 cities and that's the reason why it is mandatory or it is for us to look after these patients and i really i am really happy and i feel privileged that i was associated with the rural surgery associated with all these small primary centers and these distant places which where we could actually do these surgeries give patients a hope for getting better that's nice sir <clears throat> uh, something about your hobbies sir oh hobbies yes yes i am right from the childhood i have been uh, a sportsman in fact um, i represented the intermedical the medical colleges tennis badminton table tennis football hockey basketball and also volleyball so there are eight game including swimming and water polo so there are eight games that i was representing my college and i was very very interested in mountaineering and adventure sports in fact from 72 to 80 i have taken part as a navigator because i did not have my own car uh, navigator and marshal in many of the automotive racing racing cars masa rally they are called maharashtra automotive sporting association so these cars and plus mountaineering club in km hospital was started by our group i was taking one of the leads and in 1972 where there was hiking and mountaineering was absolutely at its uh, bud and then we started going for treks in himalayas in 1972 i remember the first trek that we had gone to pindari glacier that was way back in 72 and after that every practically every year and college used to subsidize our uh, treks we used to spend 150 to 200 rupees and the rest of the food etc was subsidized by our college because our principal and our uh, president of this mountaineering club was also very enthusiastic and we could get lots of donation so so far as you said at which i have given this uh, information to you almost 30 trips including uh, some of the peaks of 21000 that i have done i have also done uh, basic mountaineering courses from nainital mountaineering school uh, from uttarkashi and from darjeeling mountaineering school uh, darjeeling mountaineering school i have done one month course where uh, uh, apna uh, who is the famous uh, one who went on the mount everest he was the he was the president that time and uh, it was really remarkable that all these adventure things uh, helped us to shape our personality and that's the reason why i still continue to go i nowadays don't go and do long treks but short treks but i go for long um, motor trips so yeah before last before covid we went to spiti valley from mumbai drove all the way to spiti and came back 4 and 1/2000 kilometers and uh, we did that in 7 days we we are uh, planning to go to ladakh now 
on the 4th of August. Hopefully we'll be able to do with all these COVID restrictions. And every year I, I generally spend about three weeks, two to three weeks, and we have a wonderful doctor's group in all the multi-speciality, having cardiologists, gastroenterologists, gynecologists, two orthopedic surgeons, Dr. Rajesh Gandhi, who is the BOS president now, president-elect, he's also part of our team. So we go, keep on going to these trips, we plan, we do lots of exercises two, three months before going. And that really gives us a lot of motivation, a lot of camaraderie, and at the same time, it gives us some strength, you know, so that gives us Supposing three weeks of this refresh, refreshing holiday, we can work for 49 weeks later on. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. I would request you to please share your screen for the just. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. That's it. That's it. Thank you. Are can you can you start please? I think there is some we have oh, one minute, one minute. So it, it went in between. So I'll start from the beginning. Sorry, we were checking the videos. So it just came to this. So good evening, listeners. Today I'll be talking about versatility of chess, which is a topic of discussion and interaction. Uh, Josh, JS, as everybody knows, is Joshi's external stabilization system, which is a very simple, extremely light, highly modular mini external fixator system, which can manage most of the problems of upper and lower limb of fractures and fracture dislocation, whether, whether in acute or chronic cases. The advantages of JS is it's very safe and extremely easy to apply. In fact, this ease of application makes surgeons little overconfident and can give rise to some problems. So all of us know Professor B.B. Joshi, who has been the inventor of this system. And I was fortunate to have his mentorship during my career. He was the first MS orthopedic of Bombay University and perhaps in India, where he passed his medical MS in 1954, the year I was born. So this 54 is very important year for him and for me because I was born in the same year. So what is important of JS design? It maximizes the stability of any fracture. Of course, you have to help those anatomical uh, consideration and we have to also get those anatomical alignment and it minimizes the strains at pin bone interface. It also decreases the incidence of pin loosening because as you see during this lecture that we use smooth k -vars and not threaded k -vars. I'll tell you some problems of threaded k -vars. It is extremely versatile as I told you in the lecture because external fixation treats fractures that are inherently unstable. And this system needs to be used whenever, whenever operations are needed and when the fractures are unstable. And the injuries which are being treated are complex, making the fixator versatility crucial. And it becomes most mechanically stable fixator are, are less, least versatile. And that's the reason why JS has scored over others. The concept and philosophy of the JS system is that as Professor B.B. Joshi envisaged, the system should be easily applied by any surgeon even in the most remotest areas with minimum instrumentation and infrastructure. That's the reason why this system can be used even in tier three cities or even in the villages. And even if the, pay, if the surgeon has undergone a very minimal training, because this has a least amount of learning curve, and it provides a simpler alternative to the presently available modalities of treatment. You have interlocking nails, you have locking compression plates, and we have plenty of good systems available. And I'm not denying the fact that there are definite advantages of this system. But whenever there is a need, whenever there is a complexity, whenever there is an old problem, you probably do not have any other alternative than JS, and which you'll see in future slides. And again, this is a minimal invasive technique and it has its advantages and few disadvantages 
of using the system. So the applications in the beginning when we started using this almost 30 years, 30, 35 years ago, is it give, gave stability in crushed, mangled hands and foot. It was also useful in the treatment of fractures and dislocation of both hand and foot. And it also gave a precise positioning of the hand after soft tissue injuries so that we could keep the hand in functional position of the required amount of flexion and extension at the metacarpophalangeal joint, at the interphalangeal joint, and at the wrist joint. And perhaps these last two are extremely important in this case, that it is convertible into dynamic mobilization or static, mo static mode easily. We just, we can tighten those nuts and screws and bolts and it makes it mechanically stable or you can loosen them and make it dynamic. And perhaps the most important thing about JS is that all these modalities of distraction, compression, angular deformity correction, and lengthening, everything is possible with the simplest of devices. So let, let's come to the components which are also very easy and which are very cost effective. The most important five components of the system are K wires, I will talk about it in details, link joints, hinges, connecting rods, and distractors. The K wires are ranging from 0.8 millimeters to 4 millimeters. The link joints are small, medium, and large. And then there are different hinges and connecting rods and distractors. I will talk about it. So we have this small, medium, and large link joint, which are basic the heart of the system, which has 2 by 2, 3 by 3, and 4 by 4. That means it can allow 2 by 2 millimeter wires to go through it, 3 by 3 and 4 by 4. So these are the different things depending on the size, whether it is fingers, whether it is forearm, whether it is lower limb, we use different size link joints. Then we have distraction units, which are single hole and double hole. We also have a static and a dynamic blocks, which are used. And then we have fish mouth distractor, which is very important for distraction, especially in CTV, we have used this and we have found it very, very useful. The advantage of this being that you can actually remove this from the assembly without changing the assembly. And we have the modified distractor depending on if you want to do a bone block, bone, uh, bone transportation, or we have a biaxial hinge distractor for mobilization with the distraction on, et cetera, et cetera. And then we have now newer peak material which is used in the block. So they are radiolucent blocks. These are very important especially they are lightweight and they are very strong. They are as strong as uh, steel. And at the same time, they allow good X-rays if you take in this finger. So we can actually see the bones and these blocks do not block the bones. Then we have connecting rods, which again range from one millimeter to four millimeter. We have simple instrumentation to bend them. We have given these cylinders which have to bend and we can make them into J, we can make them into uh, arc-shaped whenever we need it. So we have smooth k -bars. they are trocar tip, and the size and the length according to the location. The diameter is 0 0.8 to 3.5, and the length is 150 to 300 millimeters. So this is the basic thing that you can see. This component makes this whole system versatile. On the left uh, side, you can see this, this is used especially to prevent any flexion contractures in CTV. And this is all that we have in our box. So we have various frames. I'm not going to discuss too much in detail, but ranging from distal phalanx, middle phalanx, proximal phalanx, metacarpal, and also intra-articular fractures. We have different frames devised for that. And we have these little complex frames, which are used for specific fractures, like Galeazzi fracture, lower of the radius fracture, which is intra-articular and which is displaced, lower end of the humerus fracture, uh, fracture dislocations of elbow or old dislocations of elbow. Then we have upper end of the tibia frame and pylon fracture frame. So these are generally frames that we use. And this is a comprehensive set, which at one go, we can actually use it in 30 patients. And it is extremely cost effective. In fact, your implants of lower end the radius imported implant will cost the whole system. So you can manage 30 patients with one implant cost of imported plate. Now let's come to the management of trauma. And as I'm going to the regions, I'm going to request uh, the panelists to 
um, to actually add on to my knowledge and also their experience. So in the management of fracture, all of us know that there are phases which are there, reduction and immobilization. We have to align the fractures and then we have to immobilize them. And then later on, we have to control mobilization that is important in JACE. And we have to use dynamic spleen for contracture correction if there are some contractures. And finally, we, perhaps the one of the most important step is rehabilitation to the final function. And many of the surgeons forget this step and this is what is very important to get an optimum function out of the injured hand or upper limb or lower limb. So indications for operation, operative treatment in JACE as any other fracture is when there are unstable fractures, when there are displaced intraarticular fractures, compound fractures obviously becomes extremely useful tool. Fractures with a very bad soft tissue loss, fracture with bone loss, multiple fractures. And all these are very important and sometimes Perhaps no other instrumentation can help us as much as this. The whole philosophy of management of these fractures would be a successful method of fixation should change the fracture from unstable to stable. And operative fixations are reserved only for unstable fractures. So we have segment, we have in this case, we do a segmental fixation. That means previously the teaching was we have to, we have to immobilize the joint above and the joint below of these fractures. But in this, we immobilize only the bone which is injured. So that prevents stiffness. The safe positioning of the hand can be given. It helps achieve the maximum range of motion and early functional use of the hand can be done. So this is a very important aspect of chase. So if you see this frame, in this frame has been applied in a specially mangled crushed hand where we see thrasher injuries, roller injuries, and in field injuries also, many of the industrial accidents come with multiple fractures and the whole skin is peeled off, the tendons are injured, the soft tissue is injured, sometimes there is a neurovascular problem. And these are the ones which can be best treated by Jace. And this is how the functional frame is given. You can see on the right side how badly crushed this hand is. Is practically all the bones, the distal bone, the small bones have been fractured. There's a crushing. This was a very bad uh, injury, which had to be mobilized. And we gave this frame. This frame itself gave a very good stabilization. At the same time, we could start mobilization early. We could do uh, wound management also. In many cases, this is not the same case. But this is another patient who had lost two of his fingers. The thumb and the ring finger has been only saved. And patient can actually do this cleaning and it becomes extremely easy to use. And such cases also where secondary suturing, secondary skin grafting or flap needs to be done, we can put this frame and while the fractures are being treated, we can actually give the secondary recovery and we can help this with the JACE. Then there are articular and juxtaarticular fractures which can be managed by JACE. And of course, we have to see the sites the position of these fractures where there are, whether it's a DIP, PIP, MCP or CMC joint, which are important. The problems in this are there is difficulty in stabilization, difficulty in maintaining the reduction and high incidence of joint stiffness is there. There are late sequelae of osteoarthritis and stiffness that you can see in these fractures. So these are the small frames that I'll show you in JACE, which uh, we can use 0.8 to 1 millimeter K wires and use this link joint so that intraarticular fractures can be easily pulled or give a traction and we can use them. We can also use them in some fractures where the patient has this kind of frame and he can actually use these in day-to-day -day activities. So that is again another advantage of this fracture that you don't have to use plasters, slabs, immobilization and the patient can actually use this while the fractures are being healed. Then we come to the PIP region. We have the similar kind of frame. And on the right side, lower turn, we can see a small distractor, which is specially used. If there is an intraarticular fracture, we can actually do a ligament taxis, or uh, these fractures can be treated with just, especially volar lip and dorsal lip fractures. We can use, easily use this and patient has excellent results. So in this, this was a dislocated uh, volar lip fracture which we have used this and it has gone into good, good union after the fracture was joined. Then we have uh, 
MCP region, the neck fracture, intraarticular fractures, and juxtaarticular fractures, which also could be used if there are comminuted fractures like this. You can't really use any plates. We have just used this frame, which has gone to unite, and this patient has been able to use this thumb. This has joined very well. This was a crush injury, open injury, and patient has got good results. Similarly, if there are multiple fractures, if you can see these multiple fractures, sometimes there is a metacarpal fracture also. You can use this frame, and patient can actually start mobilization with these rubber bands. And when the fractures are being treated, they can actually heal well. So this is how this frame was good used, and patient has gone into union with this simple nail traction. Then we have boxer's fracture or neck fracture intraarticular, where we use a J frame, which has been extremely useful whenever the fragments are very small. You don't have a place to keep two K wires parallel, so we give two angulated K wires. and it can immobilize very well especially this fracture like this which is angulated and sometimes it can be functionally disabling so in this case we have used this you can see this flexion and extension at the and when the frame in c2 and patient has got a good clinical as well as radiological union then we have bennett fracture rolando fractures comminuted intraarticular fractures especially of the thumb which we can see in this we have a fracture like this uh, you can either k wire pin it but many times this reduction is not possible so we have just distracted this with a frame and this we have you can see this uh, space between the joint and you can make out that it is pulling this or traction there is the ligamentous taxis and patient has been able to get excellent result at the end of it we have treated many fractures with this and this frame needs to be kept for 3 to 4 weeks though it is unsightly patients are quite comfortable using this this is a comminuted fracture like this and patient was used uh, this jace and patient has got excellent results now let's come to the fracture of the distal end of the radius which is the bread and butter of every orthopedic surgeon and we have got so many different modalities of treatment in fact i had again an honor of discussing this with um, jc jupiter and i show, showed him some cases he was highly impressed and he said that i have not given external fixator yet and with all these plates fragment specific plates dorsal plate volar plate i still use external fixator because sometimes it is very important especially those cases which are malunited he said it has found he has found uh, the external fixator very well now there are common myths regarding this lower end of the radius that we have been treating this with the conservative treatment and we think that despite deformity all these fractures do well and people think that even if there is a malunited fracture of the lower end of the radius you can always excise the lower end of the ulna or direct procedure that will take care of all the functional uh, requirement of the patient and since it's the upper limb is there is no arthritis problem and external fixator will invariably cause restiffness and there is no place for surgical intervention as the fragments are too small and these are the anecdotal myths that we have unfortunately this is no more true because we have got such good knowledge with the functional anatomy of the hand and wrist we also have ct scans we also have the functional demands of the patient which have increased over a period of time imagine an orthopedic surgeon or a surgeon having this fracture he would like to have practically 100% good result and that's the reason why we have our is mandatory that we have to treat him with a uh, best possible armamentary so improved there are improved methodologies so many plates which have come so many different ways of managing this so this has generated new interest in lower end of the radius we have this universal classification in this you'll realize that excepting for the non articular non displaced and non articular minor displaced the which can be treated by close reduction and cast immobilization you can realize that almost 65 to 75% of the cases need to be done in something we have to mandatorily do something about it and you can't really treat them with cast and there is it is where this jc is extremely important so the goal of treatment in lower end of fracture is anatomical reduction and restoration of radial length stable wrist and distal radial ulnar joint stability and early restoration of movement 
So we have this frame. I'm not going to go into very much detail about it because of the lack of time. But this frame is given when the metacarpals, second and third, and third and fourth are uh, used by the K wires and in the forearm, the radius and ulna. And then they are joined together. And this is where the fracture is generally with or without the ulna lower end fracture. So this is the frame which looks like, which has a biaxial hinge distractor, which is in the same mechanical axis as wrist, which allows us to move that axis. And we start the mobilization after about three to four weeks when the fracture has become gummy. So that the length is maintained at the same time, there is no collapse. If there is an intra-articular fracture uh, and which is displaced, then we can also have an overhead brim, which is extra added to the normal frame which takes care of this intra-articular fragment. And we have treated so many surgeons and orthopedic surgeons with this, giving excellent results. And they have, mind you, taken CT scan before the surgery and post-op surgery also after the surgery, where we have seen that alignment is extremely good. But we have to also use this chest frame very judiciously whenever there is a need. Then there are, I will just give you some examples when there are many comminuted fractures like this where we used this and we got excellent result. We've got this angle, polar angle, polar tilt, everything restored. We've also got the length restored and patient within in one year, two years get excellent results, you know, when they start moving it. And that's the real beauty of this system. We have similarly uh, very bad fractures. You can see this fracture. Uh, we can have an additional KYS with this uh, with fixation and can get good reduction and good movements at the end. Sometimes the reduction gets lost. As you have seen, we have reduced this fracture in a plaster. Sometimes these patients come after three to four years or some orthopedic surgeon send them to us. We have a problem like this. This patient came to us almost four weeks after that. And in that also, we applied the J's and tried to correct the deformity. Though we could not 100% correct it, he practically got full movements at the end of it. Now, uh, if anybody has any cases to be shown of lower end radius or any questions, then you could ask me uh, or we can discuss that. And then I will go to the next part that is lower end of the humerus. Dr. Sanjay, Dr. Neeraj, Dr. Pratik, do you have any questions? Sir, uh, I have uh, developed this for lower end radius. There are various intra-articular fragments. Uh, so I have started using as a fragment specific fixation okay, of the distal no, and radius no. fractures. So for every fragment, I have fixed with the wires and all the fragments are joined by the fixator. And that has got very good uh, result in a term like fragment specific fixation of the distal radius. Very so good. Various fragments are fixed with the different fixations. So if you have some cases to show, I would be pleased to see just now or maybe in the next. Uh, let, maybe later, sir. Maybe later. Sir. later. Or maybe uh, you can share that in our group. Yes, sir. Yes. Have. We will share later on, sir. Anybody else? Dr. Karani, you have anything to say? Well, I am doing this just since long time, since the inception from, I will say, 90, 91, 92. When it started with the uh, plug pins, you know, the electrical yeah. and we were taking the inside part and we had used that and they, they, then it got further developed. Uh, the first uh, 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 seminar which was done by BBZ had attended it. And it is very useful. I have found that in the trauma, especially if there is an open wounds, in the hands and the wrist, we have we had used it extensively in the open wounds. And uh, it is now, uh, even it was used as a distractor in the initial places, but I have seen certain cases where the over distraction was done for the distal radius. And people had a uh, patient had got a serious uh, CPRS rather than sudex osteodystrophy. That one thing one has to uh, avoid when you, they are doing ligament to taxis. And uh, if there is a gross combination, we have to address with the gaps. And the, even as uh, Dr. Jain said, it is a fracture specific, uh, fragment specific fixation or K wires are needed, additionally needed. And uh, the difference between the external fixate, which was used for the distal radius, and this is that it is really very versatile. I will say it is the most versatile as compared to the Elise Harao or the external fixator. Now this concept has come up. Now there are certain many other fixators that are coming up like Myros, Miros. That is uh, what Dr. El Prakash or the uh, Tangari. They have got a different clamps. But this I have found is very uh, cost effective and the very useful for the uh, Indian persons. 
of course all you will come for the other fractures also and yeah. as far disinvidious and the hand is concerned this is a very favorite uh, fixation for us yeah so dr karne excellent uh, input that you have put one point that you said which is extremely important the over distraction causes edema and swelling and severe pain and that can result into as you said right sudex dystrophy which is very very painful and it can take 6 months to 1 year uh, for it to get cured and that's the reason why adequate distraction is extremely important and that is a very important point that is said and this is one of the complications that we see that people who are enthusiastic sometimes do over distraction but it is important that when you distract your metacarpophalangeal joints have to be 90 degree that much flexion is should be possible that much distraction is good enough or optimum if the patient cannot flex this with the fixator on to 90 degrees of metacarpophalangeal joint flexion that means your distraction is more than that. and that is one clue and one must always remember so this one, is one point if any one, one, one comment sir yes yes please uh, when we are using this jes uh, in cases where there is a combination uh, between the uh, fracture site not, not at the articular site between the metaphyseal and diaphyseal junction many of the time we find that uh, it take lot of time to unite and if you keep it uh, in a proper length actually it might go into delayed union and non union that that becomes a problem and then you have to collapse it and those are the cases which are really uh, problematic when you want to manage it with the uh, any any external fixation device yeah I so this uh, is a very important point that whenever you do an external fixation especially of the phalanges or metacarpal or in the hand the radiological union takes longer time than the normal plaster union okay supposing if you expect this union in 6 weeks the radiological union will be 8 weeks to 10 weeks so that's the reason why the fixator need to be kept for a longer time and i talked to sivastav said it is important that you have to have a little collab at the fracture site right to so not forward it that so that will go to the late union sometimes it is important that the fracture be slightly collapsed and then later on you can always lengthen it to allow it to have a proper look but this delayed union are some type of So let's go to the lower end of the radius, which is really important. Bone, it's a challenging factor for all the fractures, all the treatment. Do. And this is what the case we need. We need simple five kilowatts, or sometimes six or seven, depending on the fracture geometry. These are three kilowatts that parallel to each other, or more or less parallel to each other. In practically the same anatomical plane, even if it is slightly different plane, it can. It can help, and these two cables, which are oblique. I think somebody's audio is on, so there's a music going on, which is disturbing. Can somebody close their audio, please? Yeah, thank you. So these are two cables which are oblique, which not only keeps these fragments together, but at the same time prevents transition transition of these cables. Because sometimes, as you see in ex, uh, external fixators. these wires go on changing the space and they become loose and that translation is prevented by these two k wires so these are two k wires and these are the link joints which are there we use many times some universal link joint which have used uh, two grub screws and these are the carbon fibers which are as strong as steel but they are radiolucent and extremely light so these are the, the later on changes that we made into jest which has helped us to lighten or reduce the weight of this fixator at the same time making it radiolucent so this is how just to demonstrate the case of the lower end of the radius generally we will not operate like this and put a kvar but this is just to demonstrate that we were going to put the plate but we did a jes instead and this is how the campbell's approach has been done you can actually see the fracture this was a intra articular fracture with a long fragment like this this was held together with a forceps most of the times we have seen that we do not have to do olecranon and osteotomy we just take the tongue of triceps and this we can use uh, we can use a um, towel clip to just uh, lift up the olecranon so that we can see actually intra articular space the olecranon space here and this is how the olecranon is held with a to called towel clip this is how the kvars are passed one transversely and one obliquely so that this holds the fragments together 
and this is how both the kvars have been passed you can see this in this figure this is the olecranon fossa and this has been held together once we have done this then we have passed these two kvars we have to of course take care of the radial now and other posterior interosseous now when we are passing we may have to take a small incision put a hemostat open out and pass a kvar so that we are very sure that you don't injure any nerve and this is how the kvars have been passed then we make this oblique kvar transfers again and then we pass uh, this is how the fracture stability is maintained you can see just with the kvars there is a good stability which is afforded without any this kvars can keep this fracture well so this is how the fractures or the elbow can be mobilized immediately after the surgery without any immobilization this is how then link joints are put and then this is the final before closing you will ask me why do you open this and don't put a plate but this is just for the demonstration we don't have to open this many times we can we can do this with a close manipulative reduction and close and dr shivastav myself in many workshops we have done these cases without opening the fracture this is how we have closed this this was the fracture uh, in the old lady you can see the osteoporosis and this was how the intraarticular stape was there we have been able to get excellent reduction and this is how the clinically patient can actually immediately post operative has started moving this and this is after four months she has been able to get almost practically full movements functional movements and this is how the in this intraarticular fracture displaced we have been able to do close manipulative reduction with jace sometimes we have to put the kvars do joysticking and get this kvars inside and this is how this patient has been start in four weeks has started mobilization mobilization was of course started on the next day you can see practically full movements have achieved with the fixator in c2 and that is the greatest advantage of the system and this system can be removed easily post operatively in the opd itself we don't have to give any anesthesia for that so this is how this is a very important case this 9 year old girl had a pathological uh, fracture because she had a cyst here she was operated twice before she came to us and she had a pseudo movement occurring at the fracture site this is how the whole forearm could be completely turned this is the previous surgery which was done and we we again did the jace in this and we can we had to open this curate it out put some calcium hydroxy apatite crystals you can see these crystals and put the similar kvar we had to give uh, compression at between this fracture site and this healed within 12 weeks and you can see that now these movements which are occurring are at the at the elbow and not at the fracture and this is the beauty of this that with a fixator on this patient came to us after 2 years and this uh, everything is good our functions have improved dramatically so this is how the movements are there after 12 weeks after the fixators were removed and this patient has got much more movements after 2 years when she came to us now uh, do you have anything to say about the display end of the radius anybody from the panel whatever experience we had with the distal uh, end of the humerus fracture management with jess i must say we have uh, i personally used it in uh, many of the cases where i don't have any answer uh, even i have one presentation with me right now many the time i use it uh, where i don't find any other uh, modality to use and it gives us so wonderful result but it's still still we are not uh, going ahead with uh, using this system in a primary case that there is uh, some uh, hitch behind it uh may, maybe uh, the literature support or maybe the legal issues where uh, uh, other modalities uh, uh, are being used more It no but in my uh, own doctor sir she was so as you said rightly what happens is that uh, one thing is that acceptance of the patient for external fixator is less and you have to actually show these kvars outside because you know what happens everywhere whether it is in um, google or any other of uh, uh, format if people go some literature research they will always see these different plates which have been used for the lower end of the humerus that's why many yeah, times it becomes very 
very difficult for us to convince the patient, especially in the metropolis or tier one cities that we are going to use this because uh, Dr. Srivastava and myself, we have practically not seen any complications, no delayed union, no non-union uh, uh, in cases that we have done recently. In the beginning, when we started using this in the system, we had certain problems, but it was in the learning stage. We were also learning that time, maybe 20 years ago. But now practically, like any other plates, and I'm not scared to use it, in compound cases, in side swipe injuries, 100% I'll use it. And I have given ample uh, cases, I have given ample examples to patients that I have done this and it has been good. Of course, in acute trauma, patients many times do not have much options in that it becomes easier for us to use external fixators. But in close cases also, in fact, I have used JS fixator in some celebrities, some models, high-end models, you know. So those people also have accepted fixator because I was I could convince them to use this. In fact, just two weeks ago, uh, old model who was Miss India, uh, who who had this fracture and I had treated her. She has just has those small pin injuries, uh, pin spots on her forearm. In fact, when I asked her about her which hand was treated, she showed me the other hand. She forgot that it was her right hand which was injured. So it is so user friendly. It is so so cost effective, and it is also in the long run hardly any scars are seen, especially in the lower end of the humerus, lower end of the radius. And upper end of the humerus, where we can't can't see the scars, you know, of the external fixes. Now let's go to the next. Sir, there is, yeah. Sir, there is one question, question for the volar finger injury. Yeah. Uh, sir, what frame you are suggesting for the volar plate injury, sir, in fingers? See, actually, this is very specific. The frame that I showed is the best frame, you know, with small distractors on the both the sides. If you use now, there are lots of methods which have come, which are also equally good. I'm not saying that uh, don't use that, but what we use is small distractors on both the sides of middle and proximal phalanx and just pull them and give it little flexion. So that flexion will help us to get the volar plate, volar injuries uh, well, treated well. Thank you, sir. Okay, so can we go to the proximal humerus fracture? Yes, yes, yes sir. So now in this also, we have selected patients. Of course, we could not do it in all kinds of patients, especially in unstable fractures. We have been able to do displaced fractures, angulated, irreducible fractures, or two, three, four part fractures and compound fractures. We have used this extensively. So this is a simple frame, J frame, which is used for a two part fracture. And this uh, gets upper part of the humerus, lower part, of the shaft of the humerus together of course, we have to check the reduction under CR. And, and these are the complex fractures. I thank Dr. Srivastava for uh, helping us to make this Y-frame. This is his original idea, and I compliment him for that. So these are the four-part fractures, as you see in the, on this model. And this is how the J-frame is. We have an arc like this, and we have two uh, K-wires, which are angulated and put concentrically so that it has a better hold and you can see that these are all simple, smooth K wires and not threaded K wires. So this is how the J U frame looks like. We have two arcs on the upper end, and this is how the Y looks like. This is the general standardized frame. You can always change this frame depending on the fracture geometry. And this is how this frame looks like on the patient. Yes. And now this is what we have treated. I'll show you the X-ray of this patient also. And on the table after fixing this. We are actually checking all the movement possible, extension, flexion, rotation, abduction, and adduction. So all these movements are checked, and they are also checked on the CM to see the stability of this fracture. So this is how we can check these movements in the office. So this is how it has been fixed. You can see the stability. You can see the alignment, which is very good. And this was a four part fracture to start with. And we have taken all the moments. We have also seen how deeply these K wires have gone. 
so it can also help us so that it does not penetrate inside the joint or the intraocular. These are all smooth K wires. You can notice that. So this is uh, again case of a doctor, Doctor Shiva. So in many of the cases, our fellows and may uh, have contributed to this lecture. This is how actually it is a three-part fracture, and this is a young dancer whom Doctor Shiva had done. Uh, Doctor Shiva, do you want to talk about it? So this is how it was fixed. She did not want to have a scar of the plate, and she did not want to have the second operation for the plate removal. And this is how the reduction has been there. You can actually see this fracture. This is the reduction that we have been able to get, and this is the post-operative full healing which is seen in this. And this is how, in four months, the patient has been able to do practically everything. This is again three-part fracture, slightly displaced, looks impacted, but it was unstable fracture. and this patient was given just simple frame like this patient though he was advised not to move his hand he came back within about one and a half months showing all these movements of the shoulder without moving it without uh, having this fixator removed so this is how he did everything and this is how he immediately after the kvr and fixator removal he had full movements so now does anybody want to contribute to this upper end of the humerus any of the inputs any of the panelist yeah upper end humerus uh, uh, we have done many cases a slightly different frame and uh, actually i had uh, a case where i have uh, tried to compare uh, the mini fixator as a locking plate the quality of locking plate is as uh, are equated by the uh, external fixator so external fixator is as good as a locking plate you can start mobilization immediately and with all the advantage of external fixator and all the advantage of the locking plate so that yeah, is why good. it is extremely versatile yeah it's very good but i i wish you had come with some cases which would have yeah. to the this thing you know because your point is good because we have seen the stability and the best part of this stability is this not rigid fixation the rigid yes. fixations can give rise to delayed union and sometimes non union but this stability allows some micro motion which is which is possible at the fracture side which helps us to for the union and that is very important yes sir it is not rigid uh, dr shivas you want to add something because this is your frame yeah the the only uh, thing which i i uh, found uh, myself struggling is uh, a cases where there is a uh, gross osteoporosis and uh, four part fractures so that, that that is an area where i'm a little skeptical because uh, there are multiple fragments and sometimes uh, it's difficult to control or uh, negate the muscle pull yeah but yeah. otherwise uh, if bone quality is good uh, this is a, one of the best frame uh, you can have because, yeah uh, it's a quick surgery least amount of trauma and results are excellent yeah you are right absolutely you know what uh, see we have done this in starting in a young age or adolescent till mm -hmm. i have done it in the 90 year old also and uh, unlike dr shivastav i have found that in fact uh, very useful in osteoporotic bone though though if it is a comminuted fracture it may be difficult you are right even i have found it difficult but in osteoporotic bones uh, whether you put plate locking plate also we are sometimes bound to have some problem but in this for lower end of the humerus and upper end in 70 80 year old ladies old ladies i think i have found this extremely useful very very useful much better than the plates and i my it would be a primary way that i would be treating excepting when as you said uh, rightly when there are very displaced fragments then getting them together with a joystick becomes difficult but elderly ladies i found it very very important. in fact that is my choice first choice of treatment in this rather than putting a plate and getting into trouble later on so that is what it is so i will go to the next one sir can I, I, we can we cross the wires across the fracture site to improve the stability of course, of course of course definitely definitely why not why not only thing is that once you have crossed the frag, uh, wires you have committed then then there is no possibility of compression with 
outside yes. you know that is one thing which happens but of course you can cross the kyrs we have crossed the kyrs we have kept them together in lower end of the radius or all intraarticular fractures for that matter okay. you know? so okay. it is very useful but it also reduces your anxiety of getting those fragments displaced yes okay. so actually uh, uh, yeah. if if i am able to reduce it and put a cross ky wire and then uh, we put a frame and after 15 to 20 days once a, a, a little uh, fracture healing has taken place we remove those cross ky wires yeah, yeah. and then uh, you can go for an aggressive mobilization and that uh, never uh, delays the healing or it never allow don't allow the fragments to come uh, together and allow the collapse yeah yeah very good idea excellent idea i think this is this is how it should be done dr bora aruda you know so good so shall we go to the next one we'll go to the upper end of tibia again i'll give uh, sir i have one question yeah please uh, sir uh, uh, this frame is uh, there is one question from one, one delegate Uh, this frame uh, in proximal humerus this frame is how uh, better in comparison to this cross k wire in type 2 type 3 uh, near structure in proximal humerus how is it better yes sir so what is the difference between the strength and other things because many of our colleagues are using this cross k wires in type, uh, type 2 type 3 fracture sir see we have actually not done any uh, comparative study we have found is very useful so we didn't have to change because this is a standardized frame that we use and we there was no need for us to change the frame cross k wires of course helps as dr shivastav said that you can put the cross k wires keep them for some time and after 2 to 3 weeks you can remove them so that you know that the fracture has become gummy and you are also you can have a peaceful sleep that these k wires will not allow any displacement of the fragments to occur even penetration of this cave wires also won't occur so uh, only thing is that this cave wires migrate sometimes you know so cross cave wires yeah. because it does not have any control from outside sometimes it is dangerous we have seen some cave wires which were put in the acromioclavicular joint or upper end of the humerus have migrated to the chest okay and we have i have actually seen that in last 40 years many cave wire have really precariously kept gone to the vital organs in fact i remember one case where this k wire had gone to the abdomen and we had to explore because the intestines uh, had ruptured or there was a hole in that so i remember one case very well so this can happen so just simply putting a k wire without any control from outside can be dangerous but k wire can... yeah yes shivastav yes uh, Uh, once uh, w- whatever i have seen the people using uh, cross cave wire in proximal humerus they will always put that shoulder to uh, immobilizer and immobilize it for at least a month or so uh, here immediately patient can be allowed to take care of uh, himself uh, and can use this hand and a gentle mobilization of shoulder can be done so it is much more uh, more useful and once you connect all these way, suppose you have put on a cave wire and you connect all these k wires uh, together the strength of the fixation is many fold so you have prevented migration you have increased your strength of fixation and you can mobilize your patient immediately you need not to put a uh, patient to rest absolutely so, so the I add one, one advantage of jace is starting immediate mobilization which prevents stiffness which prevents fibrosis Uh, adhesive capsulitis etc you know so that is extremely important and that's the whole philosophy of this jay yeah? that you are fixing only the bone we are not immobilizing the joint above and the joint below and we allow the mobilization as early as possible which is possible without pain mind you so pain pain is not there sir uh, one thing you. i like to add sir that whatever you said sir very rightly sir whatever kvr i am putting in i have to have control externally so i have attached all the k wire with the frame no k wire is free so whenever a k wire is free it can move anywhere as exactly, you said exactly you said. exactly you are so right i have to take care for that sir. well said well said okay so shall we go to the next fracture now so uh, upper end of the frame and uh, uh, dr shivasav has called it helmet frame we gave credit to him for this frame So we know in the upper end of the tibia, the problems are basically comminution, 
and most important are gross soft tissue contusion with compromised skin and soft tissue the vascularity is at stake and this is where the problems occur in the upper end of the tibia when we open the fractures and then that can cause lots of problems leading to infection the whole plate gets exposed and then we have problem added to that if the patient has osteoporotic bone there are very high complications in this we have seen deep infection skin problems loss of fixation stiffness malunion and what have you and all these have really given rise to so many different kinds of plates different modalities different management and that's the reason why jays scores over this so this case also has you can see that this looks very innocuous injury this abrasion looks very very innocuous but the moment you take some kind of incision here this whole skin is going to come out your plate will be exposed so these are the cases where though not necessarily compound this abrasion the oxygenation the skin is actually vascularity is compromised and such fractures we can do this we can we use a fracture table we use this table for uh, for fracture table for fixation so that cm movements are become easy and this is how this operative procedure is done there are two kvas which are obliquely passed from posterior lateral to anterior medial and posterior medial to anterior lateral so these are the two kvas most of the time all these fragments are held with that and the third kva is passed which is uh, trans <clears throat> exactly in the middle of this kva so the angle between this is about 60 or it should be more than 60 degrees so it becomes easier to hold the whole fragment in the three dimensional way so this is the upper end of the humerus which is seen this is how the arcs are put these are simple connecting rod which are bent to form an arc and we pass that as a railroading thing there is another arc which is passed to increase the stability we pass these two extra link joints so that they hold the distal part of the fracture so this is how we have the distal part which has been fixed by either z or 2l and this is how it is fixed together so this is how the whole frame looks like so the objective is to have a good articular alignment this is a must because without good articular alignment don't expect to get good movements at the knee adequate fixation to start early mobilization and minimally invasive technique so this is the whole frame which looks like and the post operative follow up will be we start the knee of mobilization as soon as the pain reduces maybe on the second or third day non weight bearing should be done for two weeks minimum the partial weight bearing can be started out after 6 to 8 weeks full weight bearing only after 12 weeks because the fracture is not uh, uh, healed fast uh, with the external fixator or jace and the frame should not be removed earlier than 12 weeks and this is how that same uh, tibia which was fractured with the x ray we can see this frame and this is how the alignment has been done okay you can see this alignment and this is how this patient with this can be fully mobilized he can actually sit cross legged with the frame on and after the frame removal we can he can have practically the full movements so the final movement though he has little extension lag with some amount of physiotherapy he'll be able to get full movements so what we have done is a comparison with uh, with de delayed dual plating with various different series that we have seen and we have seen that the deep infection and the complication rate was drastically reduced mainly those patients whom we have treated more more than 50 50 cases in this we have seen with jays the complication is less the <clears throat> now do you have any questions or dr shivastav would you like to say something i I'm, i would like to say that uh, this is one system uh, for apparent via fracture especially many of the time when we do the fixation and the post operative period we find that uh, there is a little mal alignment and uh, you are not able to do anything for that but with this system you can do compression you can do varus valgus correction even a slope correction which is a very common uh, uh, abnormal slope you get in the post operative x ray all these things are possible and with early mobilization of the patient the only thing which is delayed is a weight bearing i, I think in all the periarticular fractures a weight bearing has to be a little protected and delayed whether you go for a uh, plate fixation or whatever so I, I think, are, no sorry yeah go ahead there are huge advantage of using this system 
uh, for apparent tibia fracture. Only thing I would say is that posterior medial and posterior lateral fragments are the ones which are very tricky. I would not yeah, say yeah. that in all the cases we'll be able to use JS because they are the tricky one because they are rotated with the pull of gastrosoleus and or the hamstrings. So that's the reason why such patients, patients, even if you take a CT scan, you see that there is a posterior medial or posterior lateral large fragment. It may not be possible to use J. So posterior these are column fractures are not good. Take your pardon. Posterior column fractures, they they are not. Yeah. Uh, so good. so you can use this with a hybrid system. You may have to minimally open that, put a cancellous screws, or sometimes even one plate along with the fixator is definitely possible, especially for type. Six fracture, which the fractures are gone into diaphysis. Those fractures could be used. You can use plate along with um, external fixator, or you can use um, cancellous CC screws with the. One so more concern, Dr. Dr. Ram. Dr. Yeah. Dr. Ram. One more concern was about the joint depression. Yeah. It is very difficult to treat the joint depression with the external fixator alone. No, 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 no. See, uh, okay, I forgot to tell you. If there is a joint depression, it is imperative. That you have to elevate the joint by by making a small window, putting that if necessary bone graft. So we don't put bone graft in cancellous part because that heals over a period of time. But that elevation is a must. I mean that is the articular this miss uh, malalignment which is there, which has to become uh, corrected. And that is how by normally how we do it. It has to be done. There is no question about it. Yeah. Only external ba fixes, basic no principles don't change. change. Yeah, basic principles don't change. Yeah, you have to correct the article congruency. Yeah, yeah. Normally, what I do, there are large fragments and a small fragment which has gone down, a die punch kind of a fragment. I just put in a scope from up. I do a lot of arthroscopic work, so I just put in a scope, elevate it from below, and then fix it with these wires. Once it is wedged between the two large fragment, it is stable because you are not putting any force on that. But it has to brought back to its natural position. That that's important. There is no another, scenario, another scenario is the ACL or the PCL fragments. If they are separate, then uh, we can't use this. Once PCL is evolved, you can't. Many of the time, PCL has a very large bony chunk. Again, it gets wedged and you can't do it. But ACL evolution is a problem. If there is an ACL evolution, I'll fix it with a uh, uh, pull out or a screw. Yeah. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have done many cases, I presented so, it. Uh, no, no. So, supposing you have additional arthroscopy. Um, uh, at your this thing, back and call, then it becomes very easy to get an intraarticular alignment, and that is very important. So, San Sanjay, uh, Dr. Shivastav is in a very enviable situation where we can, he is an arthroscopist, joint replacement surgeon, and trauma. So, he is the best person to go to. In fact, I, if I have a fracture and if I want some JS done, I will go to Sanjay. Okay, so let's, let's go to the next fracture, pylon, which is also very challenging and uh, extremely difficult fracture to treat. So we need to have in the principles, we basically have to restore the bone length, just like upper, uh, lower end of the radius in uh, wrist fractures. We have to also reconstruct the metaphyseal shell with whatever, whatever armamentum that you use. We have to neutralize the metaphysis to the diaphysis and of course rehabilitate the, the uh, injured limb. And that is very important. So. When, when do you use JS in lower end of the radius, uh, pylon fractures? When there is a huge contamination, soft tissue injury, and which is the case in lower end of the TBI in most of the times. Uh, when there is a combination of bone, when there is an impaired circulation and multiple fractures along with it. Sometimes you have an ankle along with a uh, foot fracture and that needs to be treated. This is the basic frame, which is also akin or similar to the CTE frame that we use, which has a bilateral distractor that we put, which maintains the length of the tibia and the pylon could be here, we can have a ligament text. Again, if there is an intra-articular die punch injury that needs to be corrected as Dr. Karane had properly asked. And this is the stabilizing anterior uh, connecting rods that are used. This is the angulated bar which are used in the foot so that we can have the foot uh, angles or those uh, beams can be kept properly. And this is the second step. That is the first frame of frame. Second is distraction between the calcaneum and TBL holes and stabilize the fibula. Again, stabilizing the fibula with a plate is sometimes imperative that will maintain the length of the tibia. 
and step three will be the reconstruction of the metaphyseal shell, which can be done by ligamentotaxis. The key fragments are fixed with K wires or sometimes even uh, CC screws and fill the void if necessary with the bone graft or any bone substitute. And finally, neutralize the metaphysis to the diaphysis is very important, which is done by Jace. Now, this is a very, very difficult fracture to treat, something like this, which will you will either put a plate in the fibula, maybe open it out, but then the, if the skin is compromised or if it's a compound fracture, it becomes very difficult. So what this was a compound fracture to start with. And this is how we use the Jace frame. We also did the fibula plating so to, the main, to maintain the length of the fibula. And this is how it was used. And this, to our surprise, this was with this we wanted to change this to fixation later on, but within about eight weeks, this fracture started healing well, and we could remove the fixator. And this we had to just give some immobilization, and this fracture united extremely well. And this is how the after the union consolidation, and this is how very good result which can be seen. This is how the scar was; the whole bone was protruding out when the patient had come. The external fixator helped tremendously in such cases. So, as you see, the advantage of pylon management by JS is very good. Indirect reduction of fracture with minimal soft tissues, then avoid heavy buttress plates that we use, different kinds of plates are available now. Reduces soft tissue complications in most of the cases where we use JS. And it is a biological healing. It allows graded reconstruction of articular surface. Readjustment of fracture reduction is possible in case if there are some malalignment we see postoperatively or over a period of that follow-up. And it allows also wound care in open injuries. So now, uh, do you have any question in pylon, anybody or any inputs? No, sir. Okay, so now we'll go to the JS in deformity correction, which is also very, very important. And it has helped us tremendously, especially in pediatric cases. And we have host of pediatric orthopedic surgeons in Bombay and in Maharashtra who are using JS for acute injuries and also deformity correction. And I'll show you umpteen number of cases where these deformities have been correct with a cost-effective method. So there we go. So JS has been used for as a distraction histogenesis, just like Elizarao. We can also correct contractures, bone and soft tissue lengthening and distraction of say polycization, something like this, which are quite rare, fortunately, they go to plastic surgeons or hand surgeons. And uh, this is how, so this was a post burns contracture. This though hand was uh, salvaged by plastic surgeons. You can see this deformity with this contracture. And this also has been corrected to this level. Patient can actually use this hand very effectively to do his activities of daily living. You can see this, this was like a wooden, uh, hand which was totally useless but it was sensory so it was giving pain at the same time the patient was, was not able to do anything with this and this is how this frame these are some advanced frames where we use different kinds of distractors and we keep on changing that depending when the patient starts getting his contractures corrected but of course these are not ones for the basic JS users these are for a advanced level once you are very confident of using JS then you can actually go ahead and start doing it. Sometimes you may have to do multiple uh, skin uh, technique, erase technique, so that we, the soft tissue can be uh, also erased easily. So this is how, it, this was a Folkman's contracture again. Uh, this was operated a couple of times. You can see that the max page was done. And this patient also had a useless hand, but it was sensory hand. And this patient also, we use this chest frame effectively Later on, we had to give dynamic splints and, and this hand was very well salvaged and patient actually started using this. Of course, the whole process has taken almost about four to five months, but still patient was extremely happy. And we have to right in the beginning, counsel the patient and tell them that he has to have patience. This is going to take time. And this patient, this was a preacher who had all his four fingers amputated and he could not use this hand for anything even for praying. And he said that I just want to write with my right hand. This is how his hand was. And this is how his fingers were cut off from this. So what we did was lengthening of this with four different 
different distractors gradually started distracting and then we use the bone graft so the, all these fingers were lengthened by almost one and a half inch and then we used the cosmetic hand and this is how the whole length was achieved patient could start using the cosmetic hand and with the bare hand also he could start reading so this is what can be done with uh, with uh, slowly lengthening you and the patient must have patience to undergo this because this is also going to take about 4 5 months of treatment slow lengthening 1 mm per uh, day this is the lengthening is possible the montage of fracture dislocation in children are very common and we see many cases with the unreduced montage or old cases which are there like this the radial head is dislocated ulna is angulated and in such cases we have found this case extremely important we use the simple frame with transfixation of ulna to the radius and passing the ky so that this ulna doesn't get angulated when you are distracting while you are distracting you will be amazed that the radius which is dislocated come back to its original position and we have done more than 30 cases now where the patient has come after 6 weeks to 1 and 1/2 years and we have been able to get that in very few adults we had to open and get the radius in place otherwise we have been able to get close reduction in most of the cases and this is how sorry for the bad resolution but additionally ax uh, axial kvar was passed this radius you can see which is in front of the capitulum and this is how this patient has got been able to get full movements full supination and pronation after jace was used uh, this is again polycystic which are again extremely rare but this patient after arteriogram we realized that he did not have a radial side artery what we did was put a distractor did a osteotomy between the third and the fourth the ring finger uh, middle finger and the index finger we started distracting it made a wedge here and after distracting we osteotomized the metacarpal at the base and angulated it to 90 degrees so that it can become something like a thumb and this is how this whole process was used and this is how you can see that the uh, index finger has been turned to gain uh, a resemblance to the thumb it was very functional and patient actually started using this thumb as you know thumb comprises of almost 50% of the hand function that's why it is extremely important in such cases that polycystic is important especially thumb is lost then there are cases of genu valgum which also extremely i this patient now nowadays of course we have different eight plates which are used so that we can do some growth modulation but we can do this in patients who are skeletally matured those who are the girls who are more than 14 years we can do a simple osteotomy with distractor which is used in the compression mode and we can correct the this deformity then there are percutaneous osteotomies that we do specially in uh, genu uh, <clears throat> Cubitus varus. Uh, this is a this is Dr. Tarul Nagra's case, and he has got this device, this method fixed. Here we have this angulation, which we can see the varus, which is there in a 12-year-old boy. We did a percutaneous osteotomy with simple one small incision. Did a osteotomy, pass these kevars, put a fixator at the same time as Dr. Uh, Neeraj Jain had suggested. We also passed the cross two kevars so that there was no displacement the angulation was maintained and this is how this frame looked like in this patient patient started movement immediately and this is when the union took place after 8 weeks we removed this fax fixator he started movements in the fixator in c2 and this is how the the fracture has united this patient has got full movements at the end of it full flexion full extension full pronation similar thing can be done for containment uh, osteotomy in the in the parthes or in the uh, coxa vara we can do this we can do the osteotomy with fixators and we have been able to contain the foot head like this uh, dr tarun nagra has done plenty of cases and this is how the fixator looks we have done varus derotation osteotomy corrected the uh, angulation got the head contained and this is very important very good and in 12 weeks this kvr has been removed with the fracture heals this is how the fracture has healed this patient has is extremely happy it is contained quite contained and patient went on to get good result 
see in uh, some unusual cases this is again dr shivastha case where we have used this for fracture patella again this fixator has been used judiciously and this fixator could be removed easily without any circlage wire or tension band wires if we have got a good alignment this went on to heal the simple clavicular fractures also could be used this was a clavicular comminuted fracture and this fracture also could be treated like this of course this is not a common method of using uh, jace fixator but it are these are unusual cases we have used this in sprengel cases we have used this in wadia hospital and we have been able to treat this in clavicle syndactyly is another case which generally goes to the plastic surgeon but sometimes it comes to the hand surgeon also in this also jace is useful to specially keep those fingers away from each other this is how in stages this was operated and this is how the fingers were kept aside and later on we have to prevent the rotation and this is how the syndactyly was treated radial club hand is also another way another place where we could use fixator this was the angulated forearm which you can see we did the osteotomy we corrected that and you can see this when the child is just 6 8 months this radial club hand could be corrected this is how the correction is there this was just after the removal of the kyls you can see this small small pin tracks and this is how some of the rare cases of epiphyseal growth arrest which can see the deformity this deformity also could be corrected uh, very effectively with jes with with proper osteotomies etc of course all of you have seen this in views and more than 10000 cases have been treated in ctv especially those cases which have uh, which are arthrogyphotic neuropathic joints and we have multiple problems of the knee ankle and foot those cases have been tremendously useful and those cases which are relapsed those patients who come after 10 years 12 years we have been able to treat and this is extremely well now this is arthrogyphotic case patients was patient was operated many times three four times This is the this is the way it came. There was no other way but to put fixator. This was the X-rays which were seen. We put the fixator bilateral same same time. Started correcting slowly, and this is at the end of the correction. We put them in the cast just to maintain this correction because we have to maintain the correction double the amount of time that the fixators are used. And this is how the patient has been corrected fully. And we have treated up to the age of thirty-two. of those cases which have which were never treated in the childhood and these patients came but of course we require to counsel these patients because they are used to walking on the um, on the edge of the foot and they have to learn again relearn how to walk on the sole this is again arthrogyphosis with the congenital vert vertical talus and we have corrected this vertical talus without opening the joint and correcting these are again rare cases but we we'll, this is again you can see bilateral arthrogyphotic child with a vertical talus and this is how at the end of the treatment we have been able to get the talus in place of course ctv along with knee contractures like this also can be treated simultaneously with some soft tissue release so we have done soft tissue release of the knee also sometimes foot and ankle is required so that this fixators are kept for the minimum time and the and the correction can be achieved faster and so the uh, we can also treat polio cases or cp now these patients have never walked this patient never had never walked with this contractures of the knee foot and ankle this patient we treated with the jes corrected that gave her a plaster post operative and she could start walking so all these cases which are there of polio some of them are cp have been treated they had never walked in their life they were only crawling or sometimes just sort of pushing themselves on the ground have been able to walk with the jes and they have been extremely grateful to this modality of treatment so <clears throat> i thank all of you and if people want to show their cases dr shivastav or dr jain or dr pratik uh, i would i would uh, invite them to come please any questions so far or any inputs 
Sir, as the K wires are used, plain K wires, can this method be used for fracture neck femur at trochanter in the child in the pediatric age? Uh, we have not used it to be uh, to frank, but I have used this in compound fractures and some upper end femur fractures in say 12 to 14 year old. But uh, very rarely, you know, in, uh, we had gone for earthquake at Bhuj. There we treated lots of pediatric cases in which the shaft femurs were also treated, especially upper end of the femur. This was, we thought that if we could use this as a temporary, but they, uh, we were amazed that they, uh, we could use them as a definitive treatment. Uh, <clears throat> this JACE has a limitation of strength. So for lower limbs, especially for fracture of the femur, I don't think it has enough strength, especially if you try to compare this with Elizara. Our counterpart in Australia has done a comparison study of strength of Elizara with Jace, and we have found uh, Elizara to be 40% more strong, especially for lower limb, for the femur and for tibia. Okay, so we don't treat this as a preferred method or a choice of treatment for fracture there if we have better modalities like interlocking nail, etc. But because the, and definitely not, we can use this fixator with the full weight bearing. Okay. So with Elizera, though we ask patient to do full weight bearing, many of the patients do not actually do full weight bearing with the Elizera, Elizera rings in the lower limb. So I would refrain uh, for especially adult femur fractures and those children who are like 14 year old, uh, etc. upper in the femur. So we would not use it. I have not used them for trans cervical fractures or intracapsular, uh, extra or intracapsular fractures in the children. But I'm sure pediatric surgeons may have some experience and I'm not uh, interacted with them. But this is a good question that I could probably think about. Dr. Srivastava, who is an inventor in our group, can think about some innovative techniques. That, sir, sir, where we want to cross the epiphysis with other screw or a, uh, such a device which we cannot cross the uh, epiphysis. With plain K wires, we can cross the crave. Definitely, I think this is a good thing. And we have been doing that and even pediatric surgeons also coming and they have shown that with thin K wires, even if it crosses the epiphysis, it doesn't really cause any gross growth uh, my modulation or growth problems. Okay. Yes. That's been shown. Unless you have uh, repeatedly doing this K wards in the same epiphysis and try to puncture it or you fail to do it in the first or second attempt. So if you keep on yes. doing it, then it is definitely likely to injure it. Yes. That's why in the adolescent, two part or three part of the proximal humeral fracture this is very useful. And where you can't use the internal fixation because of the epiphysal cartilage. But they can use a plain K wires and we can do use a Y fixator as a Dr. Srivast has uh, uh, invented. So that, that is a, one of the very important indications for our JS. But happily and fortunately, we don't see two, three part fractures in the adolescent age. Adolescent, yeah. Yeah, so Dr. Srivast, you want to show something? Yeah, I think. Unless, yeah. unless Dr. Srivast is it's time. Dr. Srivast, are you there? Are you awake? I think many of you must have seen this presentation, but still I would like to show this because the, the, these cases, they really uh, show the versatility and uh, of the jazz and how uh, far we can reach with the jazz. So, uh, I have these three cases. Uh, I'd like to go th through these cases very fast we are, because we are getting late. So I'll, I'll try to do it as fast as possible. Wonderful. I think Dr. Uh, Shiro, definitely, you should. Definitely, it all started with the SAR itself. And I was fortunate enough to have learned from him and uh, has a blessing of him to learn whatever little jest I know of. And uh, this is the first case uh, which I would like to present a real difficult clinical problem. This was a lady uh, presented to me with a seven-year-old uh, infected non-union, a gap non-union of the radius. She has multiple surgeries being done. She has a transverse both bone forearm fracture which was nailed. 
it has went into non union which was grafted again went to non union it was again plated and grafted and then the problem becomes bigger because it, these plates got infected multiple debridement was done the plate was removed dead bone was removed and ultimately she landed up with a situation what we have today this was a left hand and totally non functional hand the trouble is that there was a gap there was a manus valgus radial shortening dislocated inferior radial ulna joint there a lot of infection is scarring around the operated area and absolutely non functional hand if you talk about what we are intending to do firstly i want my infection to be controlled soft tissue to be managed well i have to reconstruct the bone gap i have to achieve union and i have to mobilize joint and ultimately i should be able to give her a functional hand that that's the whole objective of the treatment these are the standard modality of treatment which ha which has been recommended in these cases nailing plus grafting plating plus grafting you can do elizero or you can do a vascularized fibula if you all have their own sets of problem and many of these things have already been tried in her case so i thought why not let's try something which i am more comfortable using with and with which i have been able to deliver results so let's try in this also so i started planning for this and my objective was to maintain the radial length do some bone transport to correct the gaps correct the dislocation of the inferior ulna joint with the distraction let the fracture unite and ultimately the objective is to restore a functional hand so this was the planning which was done since i wanted to do a bone transport this was the area where i wanted to do my cotcotomy so this was segment one number one of proximal radial segment then there was a middle radial segment then there was a distal radial segment and fourth was the hand segment and the fifth was the ultimate strong stable bone on which i have to base everything that is the ulna so these are the five holes which i created between 1 and 2 i need a distractor so that i can transport this bone between 2 and 3 i need a compression device so that this area can be compressed between 1 and 3 i need a distraction device so that the radial length could be increased and brought to this natural position between 3 and 4 again i need something to distract so that this disappeared joint can be recreated and then we need something to mobilize so we need a distractor as well as a joint here so that i can mobilize this joint so ultimately this the planning which i did this is how it was converted into reality proximal hold middle hold and between this you can see a distractor here proximal hold the distal hold between this a dc rod here again a distraction device and this middle rod which was used this was containing a universal uh jess clamps so that this can just slide on this this was not tightened this was loose so that it can slide and it provides a access on which my bone transport will go on then here we have put an arthrodiastesis uh, frame so that distraction can be done at the wrist joint and then once distraction is done with the help of these joints i can mobilize my wrist joint and this ulna was used as a stabilizing platform on which everything is stabilized so that i get more stability on the frame so this was how it was decided uh, designed and this is how it was executed this is my cotcotomy side and one two three distractors hand frame and the ulna side once we started distracting you can see here the gap is created in which later on a nice bone was formed a wonderful regeneration of the radius could be done and you can see that as soon as you stabilize everything and length is gained the functional recovery has also already started taking place because now the muscle they have something to bank upon and you get a good muscle strength and patient can do physical therapy with all these frames around once bony distraction was done and a proper length of the radius was achieved 
my, my objective was once I reached there because since this uh, this bone, if you can see this bone, it's a very thin bone. I so I don't expect this bone to get compressed and get united over a period of time. But to my surprise, as soon as these bone ends came together, automatically this bone united. So once it was all united, the bone was healing well. We removed everything so that the patient's hand is free to mobilize and exercise. And then once bone has solidly united, the frame was removed. Uh, the trouble was, since this inferior ulnar joint was dislocated for almost seven years, it was not functioning. The pronation supination was not coming and it was quite painful. So ultimately, I have to go for the resection of inferior retinal joint. And I took an opportunity to use this bone to fill this thin bone area. Because this area was very thin, I was really worried that she will get fracture in this area. So this bone was grafted and ultimately I could get a good bone and a good movement. And this is the ultimate result which we got. Almost near normal, Pronation supination and wrist function, a very good functional hand. Infection was controlled and we were able to provide her a functional, strong working hand. So this was the first case. And uh, I, I, I must say that uh, this was a real problem and most of the us will find uh, no clear cut solution for it. I'd like Excellent. to hear a few comments or any question on this. Sir, excellent planning and execution. Thank you. So, uh, uh, Sanjay, so this yeah. is an extreme case where judiciously used JS has tremendously helped. And I think uh, very few people will have the patience and the intelligence to use this system so effectively like Dr. Srivastava. And it is really remarkable that result that he has shown. A uh, very difficult case, first of all, for any orthopedic surgeon to tackle. In fact, you would like such cases to be sent to the enemy. But uh, I think they land up from everywhere to uh, Lucknow nowadays. So I am yeah. glad that they have been treated very well. Her problem was she has already undergone seven surgeries and nothing has worked. Uh, I know, exactly. We don't have somebody, somebody has to to this problem. And I think we have really, really effectively and very well executed uh, case. There, there are some instances where you use judiciously this system. I think it can really help us a lot. You want enemies will, will send the patients to Dr. Srivastava now. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, how much time did it take? This, this took almost uh, four months. Four months. Oh, not much. Four months is not much for such wonderful. Actually, uh, purpose of showing these cases is that uh, if you follow the principle of basic fixation, whatever just we advocate, you can really uh, play with the this system. That's the beauty of this system. It allows you to play according to your tune. Uh, the, the, that's most important. This is another case, as uh, Dr. Ram Prabhu has already shown wonderful distal humeral cases. Uh, this patient, this is a compound injury. This is an open injury. And this uh, triceps is totally torn. You can see this triceps is lying there. And a grossly comminuted intercondylar. And this is three day dose. Uh, this is the third day of the injury. Now, again, when these patients comes to us, we don't have much to tell and much to offer. So again, I went ahead and used the JES system. There was a coronal split of the trochlea. So what I did, I put two K wires like this, one entering here and exiting this direction and another entering from here and exiting in this direction so that this uh, trochlear split can be joined together and a good articular congruency can be done. And rest of the frame has been made as uh, Dr. Ram Prabhu has uh, wonderfully demonstrated. And then what I did, I just pulled this K wire just to bury under the cartilage. So you can see this, uh, these two spots. These are the areas from where we have entered our K wire. And these K wires are here, this K wire. 
and again all these wires they were joined together with the typical distal humerus frame which we advocate for the intercondylar humerus and then the repair of the triceps and everything was done and this is how immediately after closure this is the third day before remove of the drain it was closed over a drain and everything was repaired and this is after the healing and you can see this fixation on x ray and this is after final healing so this is the beauty of this system that such a bad comminuted fracture could be managed so well and this is i think uh, after 2 weeks patient is mobilizing on that this is at 6 to 8 weeks a beautiful mobility of the joint with the frame on you can see so from this fracture with this kind of soft tissue condition this is the final result you can see in in these fracture most of the time we don't have any answer we we don't we don't know what kind of uh, result we are going to get and if even if you plan to do a two stage reconstruction that you do debridement you do uh, control the soft tissue and then go in and do a plate fixation i don't think we'll find a place to place these plates and screws it's very difficult to manage and with the risk of uh, soft tissue dehiscence and the infection and those things so in these cases again uh, this uh, jess uh, system has really uh, provided a wonderful uh, outcome uh, and we we uh, we are fortunate to have this system with us actually and i just want to inter interrupt sorry sanjay but yeah. i remember we had to do a live demonstration of surgeries a uh, yeah. few years ago and we went to bihar dr shiva yeah, patna and they got to our um surprise three weeks old fracture dislocation yeah. of elbow which yeah, was yeah, very right, badly yeah. shattered and they wanted us to live demonstrate to a live surgery on that and i tell you uh, we when we saw this both shivas and myself said imagine to do such kind of cases in the demonstration but fortunately with dr shivas the help we could really manage this well and finally uh, he they sent me the follow up x rays and after functioning this thing x rays and patient had done tremendously well so even after 3 weeks of fracture dislocation and communicated like this shattered case there was a compounding uh, and we could manage this uh, with good demonstration of surgery in front of huge crowd of <laughs> orthopedic surgeons really that, that that was a that was a really challenge bad. yes that was a challenge but anyway we could we could uh, Another, another case okay. i would like to share quickly yeah uh, we were talking about the pediatric cases i i think uh, nothing works better than uh, jess for a pediatric case and especially if you are well into jess you can manage them so well because th this is an ideal example because this girl uh, i think she was a around 10 year old girl she has a bilateral femur fracture with a fracture pelvis with montagia fracture dislocation on one side with upper end humerus fracture and the supragondral fracture on the other side so this was the combination of all the injuries and we were able to manage everything in one go so we started with upper end humerus y frame it took us more, not more than 25 minutes to do that then we came to montagia we managed it with the forearm frame and you can see the reduction and then we uh, th this we have already seen so i'll skip it we went on the other side since it was a spiral fracture we tend to use two uh, medullary k wires and then completed with the uh, frame over that on the femur we did a uh, these uh, tens nails and on the other side femur since it was a very unstable and vertical uh, splinter uh, in the femur we have to resort to the external fixator on that side so everything manage in one go i think it took about 3 and a half to 4 hours but everything was stabilized and this is the patient third day of the surgery she is using her both the hands with all these fractures and this is the day she was discharged this was the fifth day of the surgery she went home happily playing with her sister so this is the beauty of the jazz because we are doing minimal invasion we are stabilizing all the fractures we are able to take up this case in one go because 
no incision nothing was done and it as uh, many of the time in polytrauma we uh, tend to put an external fixator just to stabilize the patient so it it is working to stabilize the patient as well as you are doing the final treatment for the patient itself so th th this is the beauty of the gs i think uh, more and more users of gs are required and That's any comments sir thank you shivastav ji uh, every time i see i hear you i learn something new and something complicated you my pleasure sir whatever i speak sir, i have learned uh, from you only <laughs> <laughs> sir one thing i like to add sir yeah uh, people say that uh, actually gs is easy cheap but the uh, most important thing is gs is like a magic like uh, composing a very beautiful poem or uh, drawing a excellently fine painting so it is actually in the mind everything in the mind you can imagine and then you will execute it so every biggest... there you use the mind that is the point yeah uh, absolutely agree dr jain uh, i i believe that uh, gs is a system which gives you a tool to work ultimately you have to apply your brain and you yeah. apply the knowledge yeah. but the advantage is just one box of gs you don't need anything else and your one assistance which you understand and he understands you that's it and even an average ot you don't need hi fi instrument you don't need hi fi setup you don't need a paying patient in any patient you can manage so that's yeah. the beauty of this system. yeah okay anyway so dr siroi sir i would uh, like to know the you must tell the audience from where they can get the system see uh, my last slide uh, i have given you the address i'll share it again yes sir see this is the thing and we have also given the mobile number we can click a photograph and just take a photograph of this and we can get everything from here it can be directly got from there also or you can um, ask them they will be they will ship you nowadays it is very easy to uh, courier it so you can ask for individual or you can ask for a box it is very i can tell you it's a lifetime investment one one uh, box we can use that except for the kys you can practically use everything again and again uh, people generally buy it and keep it for 10 15 years and they are in the happy uh, can get the profit or you can finish of this thing the cost of it is matter of one year thank you sir often in six months thank you sir. thank you okay okay so so come to the end anything left punit dr punit are you there i think dr jain has one case uh, with him I think it's not no it is too late to... <laughs> yeah the, the, no no if, if you want to show it not too late yeah, because we are yeah. looking at the complicated cases that she was showed <laughs> uh, I think I will check 5 minutes to go one case if you permit sir yeah sure please do please have a turn thank you very much sir Can you see my slides? Uh, yes, yes, yes. So actually, uh, I have this uh, used the specific word that mini external fixator and bracket the gs. Actually, gs is a huge tree, and there are many modifications which are available in the market, which are actually are evolved from the gs. So if it looks like somewhere somewhere different than the routine gs it is a, actually it is a part and parcel of the gs itself so i am sharing a case of proximal humerus fracture so the proximal humerus fracture it is different because it is important to restore the anatomy and maintaining the vascularity of the fragment and most of the cases can be treated by non surgical means but of course 20% cases required surgery and as in any other fracture 
outcome of a fracture directly related to the successfully identifying a fragment, reducing those fragments and stabilizing the all the fragments till it unites well in a reasonably good position. So that is what we do with the help of this. So this is a case where someone told earlier that osteoporosis is a problem in uh, proximal humerus fracture. This is the case, 70 years uh, male, obviously with osteoporosis and this was the picture. And this is, you can see that uh, there are uh, grossly displacement of the both the fragments. This is the AP view and this is the axial view. And uh, coming to the next slide, there are various treatment. In fact, in the proximal humerus structure, there are five types of treatment one can go as said by Peter Pollock, maybe non-surgical treatment, open reduction and plating, and nailing, maybe in some cases joint replacement, and lastly, the percutaneous spinning VH, which we are addressing in this particular case. So this is the basic uh, concept I have used for the percutaneous fixation. Many of us are actually using the percutaneous k fixation. This is the Jober uh, uh, fixation technique, which is uh, well mentioned in the literature. The only difference which I have added is all the K-wires which were used are connected to each other by a just or any other small fixator assembly. And main issue is that if you use wires alone or a smooth of wires alone, then there are vibration of the wires as well as quality of the bone is a big issue. But if we use a just or a mini external fixator of any variety, there is no issue of the wire migration and poor quality of the bone is not an issue. Suppose in some wire we use a threaded ones. So my contention is that mini external fixator or just is equivalent to external locking plate. Whenever there we start a locking plate, it is said that uh, locking plate are internal fixator. So we can easily say that just is a just like a external locking plate. So the advantages we all know in the locking plate are they are not in need of the contact of the bone. Just is like that only. A screw insertion does not alter the reduction. So once we reduce the fracture and we apply a normal screw on a plate there may be some loss of reduction. But in a logging plate, there is no secondary loss of reduction. Similarly, in just also, when we reduce it and keep it in a particular position, maybe in the cross K wire, then when we connect it with the rod and clamps, there won't be any loss of the reduction at the time of fixation. There is no disruption of the blood vessels underlying the plate or near the bone. Same here in the yes. Screws are unlikely to loosen with the passage of time. Similarly, in the yes, when we make all the assembly together, there are absolutely no chance of loosening of any wire. In fact, suppose we put a wire simply in a soft tissue and connect with the fixator frame, it will remain there till we want. This is just an example. And when we put in a particular manner the wires, their pull off, uh, pull out strength is tremendous. And there are no chance or very little chance of the secondary loss of reduction as in the plate. Let us take the example here. Uh, in this particular case, here there are, you can see the five wires are introduced in the head and there are all in the different directions. These wires from the tuberosity to downwards penetrating the medial wall. Here they are going from down to up. And all these wires are now connected with the frame. Here you can see 
they are wires are bent and connected now these two wires going from top to bottom these four wires going from the bottom to top distal to proximal so there won't be any loss of reduction here you can see in this particular case this is only one or two millimeter sort of the article surface and you can see later in x-ray even after one and a half month this particular position of the wire is maintained no wire present uh, penetration inside the joint at the age of 70 years so this was the six day post operative x-ray patient were allowed to move immediately after the surgery this was the how it looks the mini external fixator in place it may look slightly different than the just frame but nevertheless this is a say a little bit modification of the just primary it is a philosophy of the just which matters a lot this is one and a half month old progressing well and this is the two month post operative x ray of on the left side here there is no difference no penetration inside joint actually whatever is looks here the bone is like here if you zoom it and this is the on the right side this is the final seven month follow up and this was the function of the same patient so if we use just or any other external modification external modification of the uh, mini fixator we can have a very good result even in the old age or in any other place in the body it is totally versatile and can be used as you wish like thank you dr jain yeah, thank you so, sir uh, point taken yeah so let me tell you that dr jain you have shown excellent result what happens is that we have, what we have shown is standardized pain in each different fracture and that is important you can also think about modifying but we have seen that many patients who the so called beginner use this and do their own way of fixing then they tend to have some complications we have shown that this standardized frame gives the maximum amount of stability and maximum uh, good results you can also modify yourself but yes sir unless you know the standardized frame don't try to uh, modify because standardized frame has been evolved over a period of 2 3 years there is no problems of cases where we have done fixation with different kind of so can you can you close the, somebody's audio is on yeah so unless Uh, unless you are quite confident of standardized frame uh, please do not go and modify because dr jain it is in his good hands it has come well but it is possible that people who modify their frames right in the first and second case they tend to have problems because we have had also problems modifying the case in the beginning but then we came to the standardized frame which has given uniformly good results and that is important sir one second yeah so uh, dr siroya if you want to have the last word thank you very much all the viewers and thank you very much all the panelists for spending your two hours here and it was really great interacting with uh, everybody thanks dr siroya and dr, dr. prati for getting this done in the tarantella orthopedic association and i would love to come back again thank you thank you dr ramprabhu sir Uh, uh you guided very well about the jess and thank you dr sanjay sir uh, dr ajay shinde sir and all the uh, dr neera sir and all other panelists and all our viewers and thanks to dr sirohi for conducting this such uh, wonderful webinar and thanks to all for on behalf of uttarakhand orthopedic association thank you sir have a good night thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone, very thank much, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very and, much. And uh, and uh, our invitation for uh, Uttarakhand when the corona is over, sir. Yes, always. Mm -hmm. Always. Uh, waiting, thank waiting. you very much. <laughs> thank you, sir. We thank we you. have good evenings there too. Good night. Good night. Good night, sir. Good, good night. Bye bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. Sir. Nice. Nice meeting all of you.